everybody, Dr. Jamie here, and you are about to listen to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. I hope you enjoy the tips and advice in this segment. Hey everyone, Dr. Jamie here with the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience, and today I have with me Jonathan Moore. He is a construction professional, licensed architect, forensics expert, and president of Envision Advisors, envisionadvisors.com, I-N-V-I-S-I-O-N, advisors.com. And today he is going to chat with us about the FIU bridge collapse. Jonathan, welcome to the Dr. Jamie Show. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being with us in such uh, a uh, dealing with a tragic issue. I mean, people are just devastated over this. And I guess the first question I have for you is, what the heck happened? Well, that that is the nine million dollar question. And first, let me say it it was a horrible, horrible situation. And and my thoughts and prayers to the families and friends of those that were. Uh, affected by this, it, it it shouldn't have happened. And you know, the bottom line is this should not have happened. Um, while while I am not here to give the golden key to what happened, I, I can tell you the things that that are out there and the videos I've seen lead me to believe it, it was a construction uh, mistake. I, I don't think that this was a design issue, more of the process issue, and. Everyone is talking about this ABC construction, accelerated build construction, which means they built the bridge on the side of the road and they, they wheeled it over onto the uh, bearing points in the middle of the night. Everyone's talking about that method of construction is at fault. The truth is this type of prefabricated construction happens every day with many, many different types of construction, and it's, it is to a degree, the most controlled way of building something. You're not hanging over a road trying to pour concrete or build a bridge. You're doing it in a controlled environment. So I don't believe that this ABC accelerated uh, build construction was the, the, the culprit in this. Um, the, the type of structure that this bridge was is also known as post-tension, which means there, are, there is steel that's cast into the concrete that after the concrete is dried, it's pulled, it's tensioned after the concrete dries. And evidence in some of the photos that I've seen lead me to believe that it was post-tensioned incorrectly. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll say pulled incorrectly. When this happens, they, they bring in special hammers that that pull the rebar and the concrete very, very, very tense. If this is not done in a very specific way, you introduce loads or, or weights on the bridge that, that were not supposed to be or were not designed to be there. So I think that, that it was improper post-tensioning of the bridge in, in one of the diagonals. Um, they're called webs of the, the trusses, the triangular shape reinforcing um, of one of those members. And I, I think that it was, it was uh, a, a eccentric load introduced onto the uh, walkway of the bridge that it just couldn't handle. Uh, and that caused mm -hmm. a chain reaction. Unfortunately, um, in a truss-like situation like that, if, if one of those webs uh, fails, uh, it's, it's a chain reaction and the entire structure fails. Wow, that is so, I mean, you really know your stuff. <laughs> Sorry oh, for being so long-winded. I know, I got like a flow chart going. I'm like, okay, man, one <laughs> is on bridge B. They're functioning something. Um, Everyone listening is now a licensed engineer. <laughs> yes, fabulous. So welcome to Dr. Jamie CEU. You are now licensed. Um, but, you know, what's, what I'm glad that you said is you talked about the ABC and the the accelerated sort of construction because I will tell you I was guilty of that. I'm not watching the news every two seconds of the day, every you know. So I'm I'm getting bits and pieces, and when I hear accelerated construction, the first thing I think is, 
why the hell would anyone do that? You don't want to speed up yeah. this process. Come on, take your time with it. This is a bridge that humans are walking on and people are driving under. Uh, we don't and it's probably a misnomer. That's probably the wrong right. name. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. not accelerated. Yes. Yes, and that's exactly what it is. It's that first word, accelerated, that honestly made me think that was the cause of this issue. Even though I'm not in the field, that's the assumption that I'm going to make. So yes. I appreciate you clarifying that with us. So now uh, I have been hearing uh, that there were some voice messages from an engineer uh, warning about cracks in the bridge. Did those cracks in the cement likely come into play with this collapse? I, I don't believe so. I, I think that, it, first of all, every piece of concrete on the planet cracks. It's natural for concrete to crack. Uh, if any of you have ever been to Hoover Dam, you'll hear that the dam is still drying even after, I don't know, what, 75 years or maybe longer. Okay. Um, yep. Concrete continues to dry, and, and the, the, the removal of water causes it to crack. Now, I'm not saying that it was just the curing of the concrete crack that this this gentleman called about. Um, you know, cracks could, could lead to water intrusion of the concrete. Um, it, it could have been a thousand things. This is something, I, again, I believe the media has picked up on, and, and they're, they're overplaying as, oh, you know, someone should not have gone on vacation and not listened to their voicemail because it's, you know, now this person's fault. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't believe it was that crack because, again, the, the – I believe that the structural failure happened during the post-tensioning. Everyone remember my term there. Yep. The post-tensioning when, when it, either the steel popped in that, that diagonal member um, that caused the uh, complete failure or, or the concrete around it cracked to such a degree that uh, it couldn't support itself. The cracks, I think, were elsewhere in the, in the, in the project. Okay, all right, yeah, and I do remember, I thought I heard something with the engineer that left the voicemail saying, I don't think that this is a safety concern. Um, so it would make sense that it could be the improper post-tension of the bridge. Uh, wow, yeah. I really do feel like I'm a licensed, you know, everything right now. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, okay, so, all right, now the company that actually designed the bridge or the company yeah. that put all the construction work into this bridge. What's their history and is this going to affect them moving forward? Are they ever going to be able to design or build again? Yeah, everybody's talking about that. Uh, it, it is certainly unfortunate for them. I, I don't think they have a, a history as the business unit that they are. Um, you know, the, the reports say that they have had violations for different types of constructions in the past. I have not verified that. Um, I, I, I do believe that, that your reputation is everything in business. Yes. And, and the yes. fact that they've had this horrible, horrible thing, both on the engineering side and the construction side, uh, I, I think it's, it, it spells doom for the organizations as they are. Now, whether or not they could go on to define themselves differently, um, you, you know, rename or restructure, that, that's another issue. But... I think ultimately it's it's bad news for these companies. Um, we okay. have to remember that that well again yeah reputation is everything and and your first impression as a consumer is typically your right impression in your mind. It's very difficult to change that. Well, yeah, and I mean, if they were going to go on to create a bridge here in Tampa, I would be very concerned, to be honest, even yeah. if, uh, you know, I mean, if I knew that uh, Tampa hired them to come here and do something, I would be concerned to drive under that bridge or walk over that bridge, which leads me to my last question. Pedestrians walking, rollerblading, running on these bridges, people driving under them, should we be a little bit nervous? when we're going under bridges now? Yeah, good, good question, Jamie. Absolutely not. Um, we really have to trust uh, the, the design and construction industry that, that does this day in and day out. I, I would probably be safe to say there are well over a million bridges in uh, the United States, and this happens so rarely um, that this is indeed an anomaly. 
engineers are, are, are calculating these things triple or quadruple the, the loads that they would normally see. So from an engineering perspective, they are so safe. And 99.99999 times out of 100, we're going to be perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, so okay. trust that we build the best structures in the world in the United States. And because I do it every day, I see the care that goes into it. I, I feel very, very comfortable sending my children across any bridge. Okay. Thank you for sharing that with us. I know that gives us a lot of people peace of mind. Again, our prayers are with all the families and everyone that was impacted by the FIU bridge collapse. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us on the Dr. Jamie Show. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Everyone, you are listening to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience with Jonathan Moore, president of Envision Advisors, envisionadvisors.com. Do me a favor, go to Google Play, iTunes, YouTube, subscribe to the Dr. Jamie Show, like us, review us, five stars, please, and comment below with your biggest takeaway from this particular episode. Have a fabulous day. Thank you so much for listening to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. I really hope that you enjoyed the tips and advice given on today's segment. Do me a favor and go to iTunes and my YouTube and please subscribe to that channel. Every subscribe, every like, every follow helps the Dr. Jamie Show grow so that we can bring you the best guest and the best content possible. And of course, as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to leave that as well. Talk to you soon.